Do you remember that scene from The Simpsons when Homer is sitting on the couch? He says that he's bored. And so Marge suggests, Hey, why don't you read something? To which Homer immediately responds, Because I'm trying to reduce my boredom. Reading is a boring activity that no one would want to do. Homer's not willing to do it. He wants something exciting. There's this sort of attitude that entertainment involves something comprehensive like vast action or thrilling tension or sensual pleasure. This sort of idea that true entertainment that makes it worth watching is the final comprehensive emotional experience of that event. And the thing about reading is that there's a lot of building up before the payoff. But in action movies or thriller movies, often there's far less build up and much more payoff. I, when I was growing up, some of my friends in primary school had this exact st same, this exact same attitude towards their entertainment consumption. They wanted, they were only concerned about the raw thrill of something comprehensive. They wanted to see explosions, gunshot, the murderer jumping out of the bush and stabbing someone. That was where the entertainment was. And anything that involved the build-up towards that entertainment was just something to tolerate. So, when I was growing up, I watched that episode of The Simpsons, and I had those friends that said the exact same things. And that had an immense contribution to my own outlook on the world. I just generalise this to assume that all ordinary humans are very uh, ordinary humans are not interested in the slow build up, in the subtleties, in the journey in the ironies, in showing but not telling, in the detailed richness of a exploration. I just assume that all humans, all ordinary people, are only interested in the raw, thrilling, emotional, sensuous event. The idea that to actually enjoy the build-up in and of itself as the tension rises, or to see the build-up as an important step towards the payoff. Or maybe the journey itself is enjoyable enough that you don't need payoff. That just the experience of going through an adventure is satisfying enough without there needing to be explosions or gun battles or sex or swearing at the end. And by the time, so by the time I became an adult, I had basically taken the, the world view that most ordinary people are just incredibly narrow-minded and emotional-based. 
they only care about the final explosions, the final battles, the raw, emotional, comprehensive payoffs at the end of a story. And the other thing is that I lived in a football family, and football doesn't involve any tension or build-up. It involves clashing of bodies, emotions, involves raw, detailed, comprehensive phenomenon, phenomena, without there needing to be the build-up for it. There's no build-up in football. And so because my friends, because of my football family, because of the Simpson quote that seemed to be so so accurate a description, I just assumed that all ordinary people are like this, that all ordinary people are just... have a low attention span, can get bored very easily, can get distracted very easily, and all they care about is the the final thrilling event. And that's the, the emotion, the sensuousness, the sensations of that final event is all they care about. So, so by the time I became an adult, I had this incredibly elitist attitude towards ordinary people, where if there was anyone who was like me, who enjoyed the journey, who enjoyed the tension, the, the build-up, who enjoyed seeing the contradictions and the problems reveal themselves over time, I immediately assumed that that person was a unique flower amongst the desert. And so I began to identify myself with the... what would be called the, uh, the socialite the literary middle class of the world. People who... the small group of professional... of professionals who live in the inner cities, who read literary magazines, who read lots of novels, who listen to radio, and begin... and, um, and don't think much of the unwashed masses. And so, through my first couple of years as adult, of adulthood, that was the group of people, the uh, intellectual, professional, middle class, with a strong tendency towards literary interests, that was the group of people that I most identified with, even though that had nothing to do with my family background, my education, or where I lived. And it wasn't until a few years later, when I began to expand my life, I began to make friends in different areas, that I went to university, that I joined other organisations, that I began to discover that my the way that I had viewed the situation was completely inaccurate, that in fact it was quite common for ordinary people to find the journey towards an event as satisfying as the event itself, that they would be willing to read a long novel that's full of suspicion and tension and build-up because they knew the payoff was going to come eventually and they weren't afraid of going through that. And so it took until I was 23 or 24 before um, I was able to break free of that elitist attitude towards ordinary people. Maybe not 24 or 24, maybe 21 or 20. And I finally began to see ordinary people are actually not a lower class of people. They're actually just ordinary people. And I just had... I had a, I had a misleading childhood that made me lean towards seeing the world in a particular way, but it actually wasn't accurate. So now I know better. I know now not to make assumptions beyond my own personal experience and just assume the, way, the world is a particular way.